Turning now to a sanctioned tent camp project for the city of San Diego. It still remains a pipe dream for some. This coming a year after the downtown San Diego partnership initially proposed the creation of a, quote, safe village. A tent camp in Cortez Hill was close to happening, but budget issues halted that. And while some local leaders are hesitant to get behind the tent camps, others believe it is just a, another tool to combat our growing homelessness crisis. And one of the people who feels that way is Councilman Stephen Whitburn. He represents the 3rd District. He's been one of the champions of this program to try to find a safe, uh, safe solutions for the homeless. He joins us now. Councilman Whitburn, pleasure to meet you here, sir. Ray Fur, it's great to be with you. Um, so let's talk about this. It, you know, some people, when they hear tent, tent camps, tent cities, they can get a little anxious about it. Why do you think this is a good idea? Well, we can't continue to have people sleeping on the streets and right. sleeping in our parks and sleeping in the canyons. So I am spearheading an initiative that will create a better option for the unsheltered folks. Uh, what we'll do is we'll find a location on the periphery of downtown, not close to residents or businesses, where people could be. They'll have access to bathrooms, which is important, access to security. And most importantly, there will be people there who can connect them to housing and other long-term solutions that they might need. Now, in the past, this has been suggested. Uh, why didn't go, what were some of the obstacles previously? Sure. So there was a proposal to have a safe sleeping site uh, in central downtown area, uh, but it was a smaller site, about 40 tents, uh, and they weren't able to reach an agreement with a service provider. Uh, not sure there were the economies of scale there. What I'm looking to do is have a larger site that will really make a dent in the mm. population of people who are on the sidewalks. That will create some economies of scale. There's also some philanthropic interest in something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, people who really Really want to get behind it, uh, and so I think there's a lot of momentum for this. And that's uh, what it leads into my next question about the cost. So it sounds like possible tax donations or tax deductible donations might be able to offset it to save taxpayer money? Yes. I mean, you've got residents, you've got the business community, you have a lot of folks who are really interested in seeing a downtown where the sidewalks are clear, where people can get by, and where folks are in a better space. And so we've heard from people who would be willing to write checks to help make that happen. And if there are people watching uh, today who mm -hmm. would be uh, interested in being a part of that solution, I hope they'll reach out to my office. Now. Um, um, you've vis you visited other cities, and you've seen this work in other cities. Yes. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? I was in Denver this past summer with the Downtown Partnership, and they have three safe sleeping sites that are working very well. And a big part of the success there has been the community engagement that they've had. Right. There were even some folks who were a little skeptical at first, but after working with the community and seeing how effective it was, uh, they're on board now. So we're going to work closely with the community uh, and make sure we have a solution that's good for everybody. And that is one of the things that you say this has to, in order for this to work, there has to be some element of community engagement. So what, what exactly does that entail? Well, one thing that we've been doing is being out front and letting people know that we're exploring this and looking at it. Um, as we look at possible locations around the periphery of downtown, we're letting folks know that we're exploring those. And as we start to narrow in on exactly what we're planning to do, we're going to engage the community, get feedback, get input, make sure it's something that everybody's comfortable with, and that will in fact be effective in helping people off the sidewalks, out of our parks, mm -hmm. out of the canyons, and into a better space that will work for everybody and be a better situation for all of us. And I think then that, I'm not asking to turn you in, in, into a sociologist here, but I think a lot of people say, well, what, what's to motivate these folks to going to these particular tent cities? And you talked about resources might also be there, not just shelter, but you mentioned the bathrooms. But what do you think would, would might motivate someone someone to, to go there. Rafer, we've already heard from people who are sleeping on the sidewalks right. who have said that they would go into a safe sleeping site if it were available. There are folks who don't want to go into an enclosed shelter for whatever reason. They're afraid of COVID mm -hmm. or uh, afraid of other people or don't want to be in a top bunk. But if there were a situation like a safe sleeping site that was secure, right. where they could actually get a good night's sleep, uh, where there was access to bathrooms, they've said that they would take advantage of it. So this is another option that will help people get off the streets 
in, <clears throat> excuse me, connected to long-term solutions like housing and perhaps the treatment that they need. So you've done your research. You've already taken the temperature of some of those, so that's impressive. Obviously, this is not a long-term solution, right? This is a short-term solution. Uh, it is not a long-term solution to homelessness. Longer term, we need uh, housing. Some folks may need care and treatment. But this is a better situation for everybody than having encampments and folks on our sidewalks, in our parks, and in our canyons. So this is an improvement over the current situation right. that's a step toward a long-term solution. Well, Councilman Whitburn, we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you putting some attention into the crisis. I think everybody would like to see a solution. Thank you, sir. It's great to meet you. Thank you, Rafer. Likewise. All right, Matt, let's send it over to you.